Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about 2.5, which is transformations of functions. So the first kind of transformation that we're going to talk about is shifting. Now, many functions have graphs that are simple transformations of those um, seven parent functions that we talked about in the last one. Remember, you have the constant, which looks like a flat line. You have the x, which looks like a line going through the origin. You have x squared, which looks like a parabola. You have x cubed, which looks like half a parabola downward and then half a parabola upward. You have the square root of x, which kind of looked like a sideways parabola, but only half. Um, and then even the absolute value of x, which looked like a v, and even 1 over x, which looked like a picture over here and then a picture over here, a little curve, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parent functions. So for example, you can take the x squared function and if you add two to it, what it does is it shifts the entire original function up two units, okay? Um, and you could figure that out by doing a table. If you were to do the table and plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, when you square negative two, you get four, plus two is six. Square negative one, you get one, plus two is three. Square zero, you get zero, plus two is two. When you square, square one, you get one, plus two, which is three. And when you square two, you get four plus two, which is six. And so if we plot those points, negative two and six would be up there somewhere. Um, probably be around, about right here, which is where this is going. And then negative one and three is here. Zero and two is here. One and three is there. And two and six is about up here, which again is where this is going, okay? but you do get those plots, which we know are different from um, just x squared. Because if we look at just x squared, we had four, one, zero, one, and four. And so that's where this graph came from. And so notice, look at all of the y values. There are two more, which is co what caused it to shift it upward. So in a function notation, um, h and f are related as follows. If f of x is x squared, then you can say, instead of saying x squared plus two, you could say f of x plus two, okay? Similarly, if you can use um, g of x, if f of x is equal to x and g of x equals this, um, what does this do to the graph? So if I were to make another chart, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Um, I would plug it into there. So I would have negative two, negative two is negative four, squared would be 16. Negative one, that's gonna be negative three, squared is nine. Zero minus two is um, negative two squared, which is four. One minus two is negative one, negative one squared is one. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. So if we plot these points, negative 2 and 16 is way up there. Negative 1 and 9 is way up there. 0 and 4 is right here. 1 and 1 is right here. And 2 and 0 is here. Now, I don't see it actually doing any kind of curving. So what you would want to do is just plug in at least an extra point. Um, this is going way too high. So we definitely know the other point needs to go after two. So three minus two is one squared is one. And so I would get three and one. And then that's enough to tell that it's actually gonna curve back upward. But if you look at it compared to the regular X squared, notice that it took the entire curve and just slided it over or shifted it two units to the right. So, in this case, the functions f and g um, have the following relationship. So you're basically plugging in um, f of x minus two because you're replacing everything inside the square 
with the x minus two, okay? And that causes it to shift right two units. So the following summarizes this discussion about horizontal and vertical shifts. So horizontal going left to right, and then vertical shifts going up or down. So a vertical shift by however many units is when you're going to add a number outside the basic function. The basic function can be x squared, it could be the absolute value of x, it could be one over x, it could be any of those basic functions, okay? However, if you subtract the number outside of that basic function, then it's gonna go downward. Now the left and right shifts. If you are minusing your number inside the basic function, like that one, then you're talking about moving to the right. And if you're adding a number on the inside of the basic function, you're moving toward the left. So these, these are pretty um, straightforward, right? Up means plus, down means negative. But when it comes to shifting left or right, it actually does the opposite. Because I know negatives are on the left side of the number line, but this thing actually is shifting to the right. And even though positive numbers are on the right side of the number line, it's shifting to the left. So you do have to remember when it's happening on the inside, it's doing the opposite effect of what you would naturally think, okay? Um, right means minus, left means positive. So some graphs can be obtained from combinations of vertical and horizontal shifts. So vertical and horizontal shifts generate a family of functions, each with the same shape, but at a different location in the plane. So for example, if we have the basic function x cubed and we want to sketch x cubed minus 1 or x plus 2 cubed plus 1, this is how it's going to work. This one has the minus 1 on the outside of the basic function, so this one is going to cause it to shift down one unit. Whereas here it has a plus 1 on the outside which is gonna cause it to shift up one unit. But then you also have this plus two on the inside. So that's actually gonna shift it not to the right where the positive two is, opposite to the left. So it's gonna shift this left two units. So if you take the original X cubed, we know zero cubed is zero, or I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel, it's already drawn here, okay? You have zero, zero, one, one, negative one, negative one, okay? And you have this little half downward parabola, half upward parabola, okay? Um, so from there, for part A, it's just shifting each one of these points down a unit. So we're gonna go down a unit, down a unit, and down a unit. And then you create this new image. Now, similarly, we're gonna do that with the other graph, right? So this one's gonna go left two units and upward. So here's the original, zero, zero, one, one, negative one, negative one. We're gonna go up one unit. We'll start with the right side. We'll go up one unit and then backwards two units. In the middle, we'll go up one unit and then backwards two units. And then the last point, up one unit and then backwards two units. And we get this curve there. Now, just understand that in example B, you get the same result whether your vertical shift precedes the horizontal shift or when the horizontal shift precedes the vertical shift, okay? So I went up first and then left. They're just saying that you could have gone, um, like the center point, you could have gone left first and then up and you still get to the same center point. Now, reflecting graphs. Another common transformation is a reflection, okay? So if you put the negative inside the basic function or if you put the negative outside the basic function, it will mirror itself, okay? So this one, um, notice that when they put the negative on the front, it made all the y values negative, so it reflected it over the x-axis. Now, that's if you put the negative in the front of the basic function. If you stick the negative inside the basic function, then it actually has a reflection over the y-axis. And you'll notice for x squared, if I plug a negative x inside the square, a negative x times a negative x is a positive x squared. So it matches the original. 
And why? Because the original was already reflected on the y-axis. So um, when sketching the graphs of functions involving square roots, remember that you must restrict the domain to exclude negative numbers from inside the radical. For instance, here are the domains of the functions. If you're given this function, g of x equals negative square root of x, remember your radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. Here, my radicand negative x would have to be greater than or equal to zero. But when I divide by negative one, I get the x would have to be less than or equal to zero. And for this one, if I took that radicand and I set it greater than or equal to zero, and I solve for x, I would get that x has to be greater than or equal to negative two which is the restriction that they've given us there. Um, now just note that the graph is another parent function is x to the fourth, and it looks a lot like x to the square. It's just a little bit more wide here at the bottom where the peak is at. Um, so these are graphs with transformations, and they're basically asking you what transformations would have had to have happened if you consider that the original goes like this, okay? Well, it looks to me like one, it flipped over, right? So that means that you would have had to have done negative in front of that function, okay? Then the other thing I see is that even if I did flip this original one over, it'd be down here, it still has to go up so many units. So it would have to go up and it looks like this is three units. So one, two, three. It looks like it went up two units. And that basic function was x to the fourth power, right? So the new function is gotta be negative x to the fourth plus two. Now over here, similarly, the original x to the fourth graph looks like that. It obviously flipped downward. So they've got a negative x to the fourth. Um, and then it shifted to the right. So this is a five. So one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like it shifted to the right four, which means I should be minusing three on the inside of that parent function, okay? And so that's exactly what they have here, the negative to reflect, and then the minus three on the inside of the function to make it go to the right. Now, that those vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, and the reflections are all considered rigid transformations, okay? Because the basic shape of the graph is unchanged. It's just reflecting or sliding over, up, down, left, or right, okay? Um, these transformations change only the position of the graph in the coordinate plane. Non-rigid transformations are those that cause distortion or a change in the shape of the original graph. So if I want to make the graph wider or narrower, um, that sort of thing, okay? And there are two non-rigid transformations. One of them is called the vertical stretch or vertical shrink, and the other one is called the horizontal stretch or horizontal shrink. Now, you know, talking about the vertical, when the coefficient is what you have, okay? So there's a constant on the outside of the basic function, okay? And it's considered a vertical stretch when that number is bigger than one because it's going to make it go higher faster. It's considered a vertical shrink when the number is a decimal or a fraction between zero and one. It's, it's going to slow down your, your y values. And then it's horizontal when the constant is actually inside. So it's multiplied still, but it's multiplied inside the basic function. Okay. And then this one causes a shrink when the um, constant is greater than one and a horizontal stretch when the constant is a decimal between or a fraction between zero and one. So for example three, we have um, compare each graph of the function with the absolute value of X. So if you were to create a table for this, right? negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. You would plug the negative two in the bars, you'd get positive two times two is positive six. Absolute value of negative one is one times three is three. Absolute value of zero is zero times three, and then three and six. And so you get these points, negative two and six, 
negative one and three, zero and zero, one and three, and two and six. You get the idea. Um, and so then it creates this graph here and notice the original one is a little less narrow. So it got taller faster. Now, if you go over here to g of x equal to one third, this is going to slow it down. Okay. So if I make my chart, when I put in two, two in the bars, I'm going to get two thirds, which is about 0 0.7. When I plug negative one in there, I'm going to get one third, which is about 0 0.3. Zero, one third times zero, zero one-third and two-thirds. So we get negative two and 0 0.7, negative one and 0 0.3, zero, zero, one and 0.3, two and 0.7. And notice that this graph is actually opened up wider than the original absolute value. So now we get to our practice problems. So we have five practice problems. This one says, use the graph of F to sketch each graph, okay? And so I'm gonna try to do them in different colors and then I'm gonna have to erase it and then start using the colors again, okay? So for the first one, this is F of X minus five. This means it's gonna go to the right five units. So I'm essentially gonna take every single one of these points and move them over five units. And so this is still gonna have that same shape. I'm off of a drawing, but you get the idea. And then if I move this one five over, and then if I move this one five over, it'll give me that same little shape, okay? So this is the result for A. Now for B, this one's doing two things. One, it's reflecting and it's shifting it um, up for. So you always want to reflect first because multiplication comes before addition, right? So you want to reflect first and then apply your um, shift. So I'm actually going to flip this over. This y value will now turn to negative five. This y value will still stay at zero because zero and negative zero are the same. This y value will stay zero. This y value of negative four will actually go up to positive four. And this y value at negative four will go up to positive four. And then I'm still gonna have that basic shape. It's just upside down. Oh, I drew it too soon, okay? That's flipping it downward, but then I still have to take these and I still have to move them up four units. So this is like a pre-step to my final answer. So I still have to take this one and move it up four units. Take this one and move it up four units. Oh, this one too, move it up four units. This point here, move it up four. And this one here, move it up four. And so it still has that same basic shape. Okay, there we go. And so this one is in green. And then finally, I'm gonna do this one. This one is going to make my Y values cut in half. So if I'm looking at the original, this Y value will now be a negative two. Zero, half of zero is still zero. Um, here's the original, half of that would be 2.5 in the middle somewhere. Half of zero is still zero and half of negative four will be negative two. And so then I still have this shape, but notice it's a lot shorter than it was before. It's not as long as it was before, but this one is in this color. Okay, now I'm gonna erase those so that I can do the next couple of them.
Okay. So let's go ahead and try this one. This one wants me to do a reflection and the uh, left shift. So this is a left shift and a reflect. Now, which one do I do first? My remember, you have to do what's in the parentheses first and then reflect, okay? Then you can multiply. So I'm actually gonna take all of these points and move it to the left one unit. So this one will go here, this one will go there, and this one will go there. And then, um, and then this would be like a temporary graph because I'm not done yet. I have to take every single one of those points and then reflect them. So this y value will now not be negative three, um, or I'm sorry, the y value is negative four, but the x value is three. X value will stay the same, but the y value will become positive four. So it'll be here. Same thing with this point in pink, I shifted it left. And then the y value is going to turn negative. So it's going to be up here. Now here, moved it backward. It is going to get flipped over, but zero, opposite of zero is still zero. Opposite of zero is still zero. And then this one, although it moved over, it's going to reflect down to negative five. Just shift it over. So then my graph, if I follow the same basic shape, it should have that same basic shape. It's just reflected and um, shifted to the left one. Okay, now this one is going to reflect, but over the y axis. So we're gonna take um, all of our x values and invert them. So zero, the opposite of zero is still zero. So it's the same point there. Here, the opposite of three is negative three. And then for this point, negative three, zero, the opposite of negative three would have been positive three. So it's basically like those two point swaps, swap places. This negative six will become positive six. And then this positive six will turn negative to six. So those two points basically swap positions. So coincidentally, the graph looks exactly the way it looked before I ever reflected it over the y-axis. And why is that? That's because the graph already was symmet symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. So I'm gonna erase these again and we'll finish the last two. There we go. So then for this one, we're taking our graph and we're shifting it actually down nine since it's outside the basic function. So down five and then down four more. Here down five and then four more. Here down five and then four more, right? Same thing, down five and then four more to make nine. Down five, four more and then keep that same basic shape, okay? And that's where this one would be. Now this one, you're actually doing one third inside. So I know it's counterintuitive, but here you're actually gonna multiply your X values by three. So, this x value of six is gonna get multiplied by three, so it's gonna be at 18 and negative four. This is gonna get multiplied by three, which is also gonna be negative 18 and negative four. This x multiplied by three will give you nine. This x value will give you negative nine. And then this x value zero times one third or times three is still gonna be zero. And so notice that you get the same shape, but this one is far more wider than the other one, than the original was, okay? Okay, so that's all the different transformations there on a graph. Now for number two, it says, use this graph of f of x cubed to write an equation for the function represented. So it has the same basic uh, shape as an x cubed. 
Now I do notice that X cubed goes this way. And so this center point um, has moved, right? It's now here. So it moved back one, two, so it went back two units and it went down two units. And not only that is that the left side is not going downward anymore, the left side's going upward. So it obviously flipped over as well. So you have a negative in front as well to make it flip over. So that means I'm gonna have um, the left two means we're gonna do X um, plus two on the inside of the cube. The down two means we're gonna subtract two on the outside, and then there has to be a negative in front. So my function here is going to be this, using all of my transformations, okay? Same thing here, your original should be in this manner, okay? And so then obviously that little corner has gone down one, two, three, four, five, six units. So it's gone um, downward six units, and it's even gone over one, two, two units, to the right two units. And so then, and it does not reflect, it's still a V-shape going upward, right? So our function here would be the absolute value of X to go to the right, I would have to do minus two, and to go downward, I would have to minus six. And so this is the function that they want for that problem. Now, number four says use the graph of f of x equal to the square root to find this equation. Again, remember, it's supposed to go like this. So it's obviously flipped over downward, which would cause a negative square root, a negative in front of the square root, but then it also flipped this way, okay, which actually causes there to be a negative on the inside. Um, and then from there, it actually shifted down two, four units and two, four units to the right, okay? So if we do this, we're actually gonna have negative square root of negative X. And if I want it to go left, Oh, this one's hard. You have to do your shifts first and then your reflections. So let's do this correctly. Okay, so we're gonna do our shift first. So I noticed that the little spot where it should start is different, right? It's over here now. So it's gotta go down four and then to the right four, which means for my basic function um, on the inside, when I go to the right four, it's gonna be X minus four. And to go down four, I'm gonna put minus four on the outside. Now, to get it to flip over downward this way, we're gonna put a negative in front of that square root. Then in order for it to go the other way, we're going to apply a negative inside the square root. But when we apply it inside, it has to be toward everything that's in there. Okay. And so then this is going to be the function that they want. Now, um, it says write an equation for the function whose graph is described. The shape of f of x equals x cubed, but shifted five units to the left which means it would be X plus five cubed, then eight units down, which would mean I would minus eight on the outside, and then reflect it over the Y axis. So I've got to make this on the inside negative. and this would be the function. You can clean it up because this is a product. So you could do the negative cubed and then this cubed, you just end up with negative X plus five cubed minus eight. It'd be the same thing, okay? So 
that is it that we have for this one. Um, yeah, that is the end of this section.